of Tone Constituency has joined us on the line uh, reacting to the president's comment yesterday. Good evening, sir, and thank you so much for your time. Some have argued that the president was speaking contextually and there was absolutely nothing wrong with what he said. He was basically stating the fact. You disagree. Why? Well, good evening, Richard. Uh, I must emphasize that for us in North Town, we are faced with a humanitarian crisis. We don't think that this is the time for politics at all. The president can say whatever he wants. His spin doctors can put whatever spin they want to put on it. I want to discuss the plight of my people. As I speak to you, Richard, the communities that are affected have increased. We now have 20 camps. As I speak to you, there's massive congestion. The regional health directorate has warned after an assessment that there's a looming epidemic, typhoid, malaria. They are also talking about cholera because of the conditions. The, the place is really in a mess. We have water going into all kinds of arenas, mortuaries, cemeteries, landfill sites. Uh, refuse dams, public toilets. So we, we, we have contaminated water to deal with. Then we have massive congestion in these makeshift camps. Relief items have been slow and far and in between. It's hard to take private individuals to come to our aid, particularly today. As I speak to you, I've just stepped out of a meeting with the Christian Council uh, who are here uh, to carry out an impressive donation. I've seen the items uh, they brought. Earlier in the day, the Ghana uh, Tanka Owners Union were here with another very impressive donation. And we urge more Ghanaians, corporate Ghana, philanthropic individuals, the diplomatic community to reach out to us. We will want to hear the government declare a state of emergency. As ranking member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Richard, I can confirm to you that a number of diplomats are, are asking me, why is your government not declaring a state of emergency? Because that is what will trigger our support, our intervention. And they, ha they, they, they are right. All the, 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 the tenets of a state of emergency are very apparent. As I speak to you, Richard, there is no schooling. For more than a week, Education has been disrupted. Most of these makeshift camps are in schools, so no education. Water has been cut. Ghana Water Company has cut. Water, and you can understand, there are substations were submerged. There are water pumps were submerged. Same for ECG, cutting electricity, because there are substations submerged, and they are saying they don't want mass electrocution. As I speak to you, Richard, you have a situation where People don't have access to their medication. They had to flee for their dear life. So senior citizens, the aged, we are now scrambling around trying to get them their medication. It's only today that we kicked off our new partnership with the Ghana Medical Association, what I'm calling the MP's uh, medical uh, 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 caravan, to go around the camps, take everybody's medical history, make sure we provide them with medicines. And let me thank uh, Atlantic Pharmaceuticals, who are on their way with uh, much needed medicine. So we don't have any time for politics, Richard. This is not the time for politics. We don't want to care about how people vote and who is going to vote for who in, in, in the next election. I don't want to talk about that. Uh, anybody can do their politics, but not us in North Town at this time. When we are faced with a humanitarian crisis, we need help. We need a state of emergency declared. We need more tents. There's too much congestion in these makeshift camps. Nadmo keeps promising that they are bringing tents, bringing tents. The tents haven't arrived. People are crammed. People are congested. These are the things that we should, we should be addressing. Richard, you should come and see. I'm sure your reporters have, have sent you some of the videos. I mean, homeless people who are depressed, who are traumatized, who are living in ramshackled classrooms, in congested environments. I mean, that is what should be our, our, our priority, Richard. Now, let, let, let's get to the point about the declaration um, of um, state of emergency, which you say uh, would help 
uh, push um, greater effort towards the situation in your constituency and beyond. Article 31 of the Constitution demands specific uh, requirements. The Council of State must have its own view on the matter. And 72 hours or so um, after the, so the declaration by the President, it must go before Parliament. As we speak, Parliament is not sitting. How do you expect a declaration to be made at a time we do not have Parliament in session? I am glad that you've raised these uh, constitutional requirements that have to be met. Fortunately, these constitutional requirements are not some Chinese wall that we cannot uh, jump over. We are all able and ready to convene an emergency meeting of the House. We, we don't have to wait. There are times that we have done this over less important matters. I mean, you have followed Parliament. I can call you uh, a Ghanaian Parliament expert because of the many years that you've been with us in the House. You recall that we have called the House during periods of recess on matters such as even uh, uh, 40s, you remember, uh, Ford, uh, Ford, uh, the Ford exhibition matter, uh, all kinds of you know, petty political issues. How much more on this humanitarian crisis? So we should be able to convene the House to sit even under two hours if there is a political will. It can be done. The Council of State, I'm sure, uh, will 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 be happy uh, to to agree with us on this matter. Fortunately, a number of them have reached out to me. Some have even sent videos asking, I mean, is this real or is fake fake news? I tell them that it's real and it's actually worse than what 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 you have. Uh, so I, I, I know that I'm, uh, within the political class, there is some deep concern and there's tremendous you know, goodwill to help, to reach out to uh, all these affected people. Not mostly the number has increased to about 26,000. Uh, North Tone alone has 10,000. Uh, and, and it's going to go up. Unfortunately, I met uh, VRA officials earlier today. They are telling me that the spilling will continue uh, because the water levels are not going down. And you do know that the rains too are pouring thick and fast. It's been raining cats and dogs. So there is no end in sight. We cannot look at the horizon and know exactly where. Nobody can predict that, look, this crisis will end in a week or in two weeks or three weeks. So we are in a really difficult place. Okay, so let's say... traumatizing times. And so this, this hmm. declaration is important and we can do it. If there's a political will, it can be done. I understand you say that the international community is willing to help if the declaration is made by the president. But why exactly do we need that? to actually kick off with a bigger attempt to deal with the problem? So you see, look, we need an all hands on deck. And uh, so far, not more appears to be struggling. I mean, since they told us that they were going to bring tents, it's been almost a week. Um, I spoke to the Volta Regional Minister. He says the Interministerial Committee is meeting today. Uh, we should give them time. But you see, we, this requires agency. And we are getting really frustrated. But why would a state of emergency make a difference? That that's the question I'm asking. It will because it will it will it it is is going to is going to then uh make resources available. Everybody is going to sit up because so far, look, this let's be honest, it's been a very lethargic approach by leadership. Very lackadaisical. I mean you you, you don't get the sense that there's 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 real mobilization. That declaration is going to jolt people out of slumber and, 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 and everybody's going to get to work. Okay. Now, let's turn our attention quickly to something else you have been dealing with as a person and as a member of parliament. The matter of the National Cathedral Project. We have before us a notice sent to the President of the Republic by two distinguished men of God, Archbishop Duncan Williams and Reverend Eastwood Anaba. They say they will no longer continue as members of the Board of Trustees. Are you surprised by this decision? Richard, I'll be very brief on this because I have told you that we are responding to a humanitarian crisis. The Christian Council is waiting for me. Uh, I just want to commend highly uh, the two revered clergymen. Um, some may say um, it's, it's, it's delayed, but I would say better late than, 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 than never. They have covered themselves in glory by this resignation, and it's a vindication, really, 
a clear confirmation about all the things I've been talking about. Look at how they say within the board they have been really frustrated about getting the board to carry out an independent audit. If folks in there have nothing to hide, why did they really prevent efforts by these respected clergymen to have an independent audit? You know, so it's, 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 it's a clear confirmation. Um, I'm sure in the coming days we'll have time. Fortunately, uh, there's going to be a national inquiry, an independent parliamentary inquiry on this matter. Our motion has gone through. Speaker approved. The House has, uh, has, has voted on it. We're just waiting for the MPP side of the House to send their membership, and then we'll have the full-blown inquiry. It will be public hearings, and we'll delve into the matter. So uh, there will be uh, a day for us to really uh, look at this National Cathedral issue. But for now, let me just commend them for their resignation. It's a clear vindication, and uh, I want to return to uh, our humanitarian crisis. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us. The Honorable Samuel Okujetua Blackwa, Member of Parliament for the North Town Constituency.